that in the back? Is that okay? Yeah, cool. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about something. This was this was sort of a, an inspiration for this. Um, this is a book by Nicole, Bill Nicole, which is mostly about business. Um, but he, he has this quote, technology can bring benefits if and only if it diminishes limitation. So any technology you decide to adopt it should be limiting, uh, uh, diminishing some limitation or some constraint in the system. Uh, so I was thinking about different bits of technology or different practices we use as engineers and thinking about what constraints they're limiting or what, or what limitations they're diminishing. Uh, and one that comes to mind a lot, and people talk about a lot in development, is, especially in object-oriented development, uh, is solid. Uh, and I, I don't like solid. I think it's rubbish. Um, so I'm going to say why I think it's rubbish. I hope you'll uh, give you the time to do that. Uh, and also a little bit about what it's supposed to, supposed to mean. So I'm going to, I'm going to talk, about, uh, talk about solid. So the S at the beginning stands for single responsibility. Uh, so the idea is that each uh, component or each thing in your code should do just one thing. Uh, and this means that when the requirements change for that thing, you've only got one thing to change. That sounds really cool. That sounds you know, super maintainable. That's our utopia. Um, so I think how this, this actually maybe works out is that's quite vague. What is a single responsibility? What's the one thing? What's a, you know, what's a boundary for one thing in your application? Um, I'm using an example here like in C Sharp or uh, a lot of languages have properties. Uh, that's got a getter and a setter. Is that breaking single responsibility when you can retake the data as well as retrieve the data? Well, I don't know. So you must be setting some arbitrary boundary already. Um, so it's, it's pointlessly vague. I don't think that it makes sense. I think an, uh, an encapsulation should make sense to the business, not necessarily the programming language. So you should be thinking about, rather than single responsibility, you should be thinking about what needs to be encapsulated for the sake of my business. Uh, open closed. Uh, so this idea is that all code should be open to extension and closed for modification. Uh, I think the reason for this uh, originally is because if code works, don't change it. <laughs> um, because if you change code that works, then you'll probably break it. Um, which I think that sounds pretty sensible. Um, I think in reality this is kind of silly. Uh, if code, if your, your, your uh, business requirements change, just change the code. If you don't change the code when your business requirements change because a code that works shouldn't be touched, um, then it means you've got fear about something that's in the code base. And I think, uh, and I've seen in the past, that fear is the absolute worst killer to productivity, to readability, to maintainability, to change. And change is good because uh, every time we want to sort of migrate and move uh, our application forward, we want to make sure that we, under we fully understand it. If we, we're frightened of part, we don't. We probably don't understand it. Uh, so fear is the worst. Uh, the next, L, Liskov substitution. Hands up who thinks they fully understand that. And this is a rhetorical question. <laughs> uh, Liskov is an odd word. Uh, substitution, I think we think we know what that means. Plus the, the, the example is strong behavioral subtyping. Uh, it seems a bit different. Subtype provide all desirable behaviors. So the idea that any, for any, Area where you need to use a class, you should always be able to use a base version of that class in the same situation. Right? So this implies that the behavior of your code should be identifiable by the structure of the hierarchy of the classes that implement your, your design. And well, that sounds like it kind of makes sense, right? Kind of this explanation in, in the structure of the design. Uh, I think this is kind of weird, it's not very well understood, and it leads to this sort of polymorphic dancing thing where Stuff starts, you start inverting control, and you have factories of factories of services and strategies. And this idea to kind of um, ensure that everything is, is sort of being delegated out in these subtypes and stuff. Uh, and you end up with inheritance chains that are you know, incredibly hard to understand. Uh, and I think that composition is nearly always easier to reason about than inheritance uh, when you're looking at a piece of code. And that's my opinion. And, uh, here's another reason why I don't like it, because for it to actually work, you need to have these four rules satisfied. They are preconditions, post conditions, invariants, and the history, uh, sorry, the history constraint. And I'm guessing that probably this is, you might have all heard of solid, you might not have all seen this before. <laughs> um, and this is the reason why a lot of the time in code bases, the, the intent makes sense, but the reality of it doesn't, because these rules aren't followed, what you have is horrible side effects happening in some weird subclass because you're like, oh, actually, this is a special case 
compared to what I've def defined as invariant in the base class. Uh, and you end up with people not following these rules, and so actually you're probably not following this card, you've just got a horrible inheritance chain, which I think is rubbish. Um, so this is my, my quote, if you're having diamond problems, I feel bad for you, son. You've got 99 classes, but this overload isn't the right one, and it violated my invariants, <laughs> disregarded the history of the um, That's for me, that's for you. <laughs> I think it's funny. <laughs> Uh, bonus fact, uh, for all those who ever heard me talk about F sharp, and uh, you've gone online and hear me talk about F sharp a lot, functional polymorphism isn't hierarchy, isn't inheritance, it's composition and pattern matching, which is uh, much better. Take my word for it, it generally is. Um, next, interface segregation. Design against the smallest needed abstraction. So any client of a piece of code should only give care about the smallest surface area of a piece of code that it relies on, which I guess sort of makes sense. Uh, so you're designing to abstraction, and you're designing to the minimal abstraction that is required by the client. Uh, I also think this is stupid. Um, God objects, anything is better than God objects. Anything is better than a huge public interface. Um, but I think if, if you start thinking about hiding things from a client, you start, think, you start hiding concepts within the code. Um, and there aren't many hidden things, right, really, that we can see a lot of code with, and so we need to be hiding things. Uh, another part of the abstraction, you might only be using part of it, but you might be like, later on, I need to use another part of it. But you didn't know it existed, so, because it was hidden from you in that abstraction. So I, I think really, if, if, you're, if you've got small public surface areas for your abstractions, um, then you don't need to kind of break things up too much into these two micro abstractions. Uh, which I think are, are really bad. The same with microservices might be. Um, so the, uh, the next one, the final one, D, uh, dependency inversion. So this is the high level components should only rely on the abstractions of those components. So interfaces should, depend, should, should not depend on the details of their implementation. That's totally fine. I no <laughs> problem with that whatsoever. Uh, so there's one out of five, but I definitely like that's. Probably fine, right? Depending on abstractions and not. Uh, but there's one thing to know. I want to, you know, I want to be angry about something, um, which is we're probably not designing super low-level libraries. The majority of people in this room, I imagine, are writing business code and not a uh, key contributor to um, uh, Banksy Castle or something like that. Um, so the reuse uh, and, and kind of where you're breaking things out into those kind of small abstractions. For the sake of that, that reuse and, and uh, creating abstractions quite often for the sake of a DI. I mean, how many people here have had a class that implements one interface and that interface is only ever implemented by one class? Yeah, it's probably because you're using a mocking framework and you're like, the mocking framework only mocks maybe an interface or whatever. And it's kind of like, is that really necessary or is it just you know, noise in the code? And I think it could be considered noise in the code because object oriented. Um, languages sort of make you do that, and I think that's not necessarily a good thing. Maybe sometimes you, need, you, know, you should think about that. And new shouldn't be a, a bad word uh, all the time. So, uh, sort of getting towards a conclusion, does solid diminish a limitation? Uh, and I think it sort of seems to just define a set of arbitrary rules that people are supposed to follow to make their code arbitrarily better for some reason. Um, and I think the, the intent has often been lost from each of those letters, um, and it's kind of created a dogma, and I think a dogma is clean code, um, says it's a really bad idea, um, and I think it's changed for the better, especially with sort of changing of boundaries. We very rarely say that people want to design a code base that's, you know, some enormous uh, chunk of stuff um, that needs to have a lot of these rules um, sort of apply to it. We're, we're working in a more service oriented way. Our boundary context is getting smaller. We don't need to share as many resources across code. And we don't need to worry about the size of our binaries so much and all that kind of stuff. So having more types, is, I think that's okay. Um, so I think there's a couple of things that are more useful. Uh, I think the first one I think that is more useful is dry, and I think the intent for this is much easier to understand uh, and communicate within the team. So, dry sounds for don't repeat yourself. I think not repeating yourself in a code base is a very sensible thing to do. If you need, if you have one abstraction for things, you don't need to write that five times, just have one abstraction for us. Uh, so yeah, don't and needlessly repeat yourself. Uh, code is more maintainable and changeable. 
uh, pleasant to work with when it's conscious of the context. Uh, so if, if you have a different context, that adds a new shape to an existing abstraction. Maybe it needs a new abstraction, and, and that's okay. Um, case, uh, keep it simple. And keep it simple, stupid. I'm not sure whether that's supposed to be implied in your stupid or that the code is stupid. I like to think of thinking about it that the code is stupid. Uh, write stupid code, right? Nobody wants to see clever code because I haven't got the time for that. Um, <laughs> so I think if the abstraction can fit in your head uh, and logically sit together, uh, in the sense of the business, maybe not necessarily in the sense of the language, and it's very important to abstract business into your code, um, then I'm okay with that. Someone else might not be, but um, if you ask me, I'm going to be okay with that. Um, cool, so the, the, the sort of final tagline, just write simple, clear code, that's fine. Readable and flexibility, uh, readability and flexibility is way more useful um, uh, in your code base than, than sort of making sure you follow some some rule that you've designed. And I think having code that's wrong today, because you think maybe you've got the wrong abstraction, or you could have you could break that abstraction out more, is maybe better if it gives you a better understanding of that piece of code. It means you can get it more right the next day. Uh, and I think that, that making sure that every day you're making it a little bit better and not making it a little bit more correct for some arbitrary rules um, is, is better for um, so that's it. That's all I want to say about Solid. My name's Jason uh, Adam Um I work for a company called Codat. Uh, we're hiring uh, C Sharp developers. Uh, if you're a C Sharp dev, you're writing clean code. Uh, <laughs> chat to me. Uh, that's it.